I was asked to speak to you about forcings, um, and I want to put that in the context so that hopefully it'll make a little bit more sense. So what I'm going to talk about is the Earth's energy budget in general and the fluxes and forcings that are important within that budget. Um, so this is a view of the inner solar system, of obviously a cartoon view, uh, not to scale and not actual imagery, um, showing the first four planets within the solar system and then the sun. And if you look at Mercury, which is the first planet from the sun, um, its approximate average surface temperature is 425 Celsius, which is equivalent to 800 Fahrenheit. And for anybody in the audience who's used to baking cookies or anything, um, you would probably realize that 800 Fahrenheit is way higher than your oven will actually go. So that's a really, really, really hot um, surface. And then if you go to Venus, which is a second planet, um, it actually is even warmer. It's 450 degrees Celsius at the surface. So interestingly, as you get further from the sun there, um, the temperature is going up. So there's some other factor going on. And then skipping for a moment over the Earth, um, the surface temperature of Mars, we have, we have a lot of information about Mars. So we know that the surface temperature varies from about minus 113 to zero Celsius, so, so below freezing um, generally, but very um, variable, uh, but clearly much, much, much colder than uh, Mercury and Venus. So, and so I start to wonder, you know, what's, what's the controlling factor here? Now, if we come back to the Earth for a minute, um, the average temperature here, minus 18 Celsius. This is the temperature that the Earth would be if there was no atmosphere. So you, you may have heard about the, I guess there's a TV show, Third Rock from the Sun. Um, if it really were just a rock, then the surface temperature would average minus 18 Celsius. Right, now, um, to give you an analogy for this, and since you guys are in Florida, I figured, or at least I believe you're mostly in Florida, I believe I went with the summer analogy. So here's a house, and it's summertime, and so it's hot outside. Um, and so in order to maintain a comfortable temperature within the house, you have some sort of a cooling system. Typically, that would be an air conditioning system. Um, but you have some sort of a cooling system. And so when you get to a point where the heat coming in through the walls from outside is balanced by the cooling from that system, then you have a balance. And so that's the same kind of concept that we're talking about for the planet as a whole. Okay. So as we said, this is the top of the atmosphere balance. Now, this diagram, um, the, the previous diagram was in terms of percentages. This diagram is in terms of actual units, energy units. Um, so you can think about that in terms of light bulbs. That's about six 60-watt light bulbs shining on every single square meter of the Earth. Okay, so that gives you kind of the level that we're talking about. And that's on average. Um, at night, obviously, you've got no energy coming in. Um, then we can look at what happens down at the surface as that energy comes down. So you see that not all of the sunlight makes it to the surface. Uh, it was about 340 at the top. At the surface, uh, less than half is actually making it down. Um, then the interesting thing here is this big red arrow, um, the heat emitted from the surface, 398. Okay, So the amount of heat emitted from the surface is actually more than what comes in from the sun. And the reason that happens is because of this factor right here. Gases in the atmosphere um, return some of this heat back to the surface. And that if you add all these up with the right sign, you have these other things. And this is um, evaporation and um, convection, so thunderstorm, thunderstorm systems. Uh, heat rising in the atmosphere. That's what actually causes the balance at the surface.